This is Mission Control Houston. Welcome to today's ISS update for Friday, February 17th, 2012. This is a live view inside the International Space Station's flight control room here at the Johnson Space Center. This team here is being led today by Flight Director Mike Serafin, who is there in the middle. Sitting beside him is uh, Tony Sicacci, a former fellow uh, shuttle flight director. He is uh, also sitting on console, getting uh, trained on the space station and its systems. Sitting beside them uh, both as the Capcom today is astronaut Shell Lindgren. He is the uh, voice of the team here in Houston to the Expedition 30 crew aboard the International Space Station. There's a look at the crew. The crew has a very busy Friday on tap for them. Don Pettit, who's on the far right, has been uh, working on an experiment called SLICE. This stands for the Structure and Liftoff in Combustion Experiment. What it does is take a look at uh, how different flames perform uh, in space. Uh, there is a, a phenomenon called liftoff, which is where the flame actually comes up off the burner. And uh, this is caused by a series of different things, whether it's the uh, combustion elements themselves, uh, what makes up the flame, or uh, the different type of flow that is happening. Obviously, flames behave a bit differently up in space than they do here on the ground. But by studying this uh, liftoff phenomena, as we talked about, uh, it is hoped that uh, teams here on the ground can design better uh, products that have better fuel efficiency or uh, better combustion inside of them. Uh, Pettit is also working today on some routine maintenance on the robotic workstation that is down in the cupola. Uh, this is sort of the Windows on the World module of the International Space Station. There is a robotics workstation there uh, that is used anytime the crew is operating this uh, station's robotic arm. So he will take care of that later on this afternoon. Meanwhile, Anatoly Ivanishin, another member of Expedition 30, is working on opening the transfer hatch between the pier's docking compartment, which is the site of yesterday's spacewalk, and the Progress 46 cargo craft. Those hatches were closed, obviously, because the uh, cosmonauts were opening up the hatch on piers and decompressing it uh, so they could step outside. So they had to seal off that Progress cargo craft, which you see the layout of the station there, uh, docked back there with piers. So they will take care of opening that hatch back up uh, later on today. Andre Kuipers is working on an experiment called MARS. This is the Mus Muscle Atrophy Research and Exercise System. It's uh, sort of an exercise system that you would, it looks like something you would find on the ground here in a gym, but operates a little bit differently. This uh, item measures and exercises seven different joints to see what happens uh, to the crew members' bodies as they uh, live up on board the International Space Station for up to six months monitoring the uh, body's performance and how it adapts to space is incredibly important and one of the main things that the International Space Station is teaching us. Obviously those lessons will be very important as humans venture beyond low Earth orbit and head to even further destinations out in space. Corp is also working on the cabin fan assemblies and ventilation ducts there inside the Columbus module later on this afternoon. Oli Konanyenko and Anton Shikaplorov are uh, taking care of quite a number of different activities today and also recovering from yesterday's spacewalk. That spacewalk lasted six hours and 15 minutes. They'll be talking with ground controllers today to review yesterday's spacewalk and uh, talk about everything that was accomplished. During that spacewalk, they completed the move of the Strela boom. This is one of the two large extension booms that are on the outside of the Russian segment of the station. They use these to uh, move around and to uh, gain access to different portions of the Russian segment. Strela 1 used to be on the piers docking compartment, which is on the bottom side of the station, the earth-facing side of uh, that part of the complex. They moved it up to the Poisk module, which is directly up above piers on the space-facing uh, side of the Russian segment. There is another boom called Strela 2 that is still down on Poisk. That will be moved, uh, down on piers, excuse me, that will be moved later on uh, this summer by a future crew, these uh, Strela booms that you see the crew moving yesterday are uh, being moved up to the top of the station to make way for the departure of piers. Uh, that particular portion of the station has been up there for more than 10 years, uh, and it will say goodbye as it makes way for a brand new multipurpose laboratory module uh, that our Russian counterparts will be launching uh, later on next year. Dan Burbank, the commander of Expedition 30, is working on quite a number of different experiments today, including MELFI. This is the minus 80 laboratory. This is a large freezer on board the station that is used to store uh, different types of samples and uh, experiments at uh, really, really cold temperatures. You're seeing a picture of it here. He is basically going to be doing a nitrogen pressure check just to make sure that that MELFI is operating as expected. 
He is also going to be working on an experiment called BCAT-6. This is the binary colloidal alloy test. And he and the rest of the crew members also have several different crew Earth observation opportunities today. They will be flying directly above Chile, and we'll have a chance to take a look down at the Woolia Cove. This is uh, an HMS Beagle uh, landing site. And they will also be uh, flying over the St. Helena Island, which is off in the Atlantic Ocean, off the coast of Africa. Of course, for all the latest uh, over the weekend on the Expedition 30 crew, you can just log on to the NASA website at www.nasa.gov station.